So exposure therapy is the gold standard for treating anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, it's a process by which uh, a person confronts their fears uh, a little at a time and purposefully induces panic states within themselves. And then rather than allowing the activation of the nervous system to uh, guide their actions, you, you choose instead to activate your parasympathetic nervous system and dispel that energy. So the, there are five primary ways that you can activate your parasympathetic nervous system when you are panicked. And that's fight, flight, freeze, eating, or having sex. Or you can call those the five Fs, which is the joke, which is fight, flight, feed, freeze, fuck. So when you purposefully induce a panic state by exposing yourself to the things that terrify you and then get control of them uh, using the five Fs, in my case, uh, I just did a half an hour of them of each one every day in a way that made me feel calm. And I sort of, I structured them as, as spiritual practices, each of them as spiritual practices. Um, and so, and obviously that takes a long time. That's three hours every day of, of therapy. Um, but over time you really uh, build a nervous system that's pretty um, resilient. Hmm. And so there was a lot of that. There was a lot of confession and a lot of um, working through toxic shame and um, and there was a lot of uh, uh, disentangling myself from my family and disentangling myself from codependent patterns um, that you know existed in my family that I grew up with and uh, and I think that works ongoing always. Um, hmm. Hmm. What did can you sort of paint me a picture of what you exposing yourself to these triggers and then working through them with the five Fs look, might have looked like on a given day? Sure. So, well, so at first I, I did not, I didn't have a great um, theory of my, of my own emotions or great awareness of my own emotional states, you know? So I kind of had to figure that out first. Like what do all these feelings mean? And then once I had that, I was, and, and, and was working on, um, mindfulness and working on uh, metacognition skills, I was able to sort of watch what thoughts would precipitate emotional states hmm. and then connect and then, and then journal into those thoughts. Well, where does that come from? What's, what's in the, what's the, where, where do those roots go in my unconscious? And when I could find sort of all the associations uh, of, of what this thing was that terrified me, then it's, it's a, actually a relatively simple thing to, um, to find manifestations of that on the internet hmm. and go expose yourself. And then, and then half an hour each of the five Fs soon, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't actually take too long, but it's, but it's extraordinarily unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Huh. What, um, there's sort of an, like, I, I can imagine someone objecting and being like, that seems like it wouldn't help. Why, why would that be something that would help? Can you speak to that? Yeah, I, uh, a little bit. There's a persistent myth that this is something that could be harmful and that this is something that um, uh, you know, would, is not helpful to people. And we have a mountain of evidence that says the opposite. Hmm. There, there is something to be said if someone has very severe or complex PTSD, and I, and I mean uh, re like really severe cases uh, wherein an exposure to a trigger actually can destabilize um, their life or destabilize their, their mental state, then you wouldn't, want, um, you wouldn't want to expose someone to large amounts of their triggers uh, you know, against their against their will, or you wouldn't, you know, I mean, certainly all there's always informed consent with exposure therapy, but you would want to be careful about, uh, you know, 
um, not introducing those people to triggers to whatever responsibility you could take for that. But that's that's a relatively rare thing. And what it is, is it's painful. It is emotionally painful to, to face the things that cause you strong emotions. Um, and, uh, and so there is, so there's this kind of like folk wisdom that sprung up that, um, that avoiding your fear or that avoiding triggers or avoiding these sorts of things um, is a healthy or a good thing. And it's, it's not. And in fact, the longer you let an anxiety go unconfronted, it festers and worsens and, and implants itself even deeper in, in the mind. And it's so much harder to get out. Mm. Um, and so none, none of that is to, is, is to say uh, that, uh, you know, when we do things like, like put trigger warnings on, on media or in, in schools, that this isn't done compassionately and, and with good intentions. And um, in my mind, it's a, it's a compromise that, um, that everybody, that probably everybody doesn't like, but it's good enough. Um, because there are a few people that it's, it would, you know, it, it would not be good for them or it's not necessary for them to confront certain kinds of content on, on some days. Um, but by and large, uh, creating an environment in which people can avoid feeling their fear is, is really quite uh, detrimental to their health. Hmm. Hmm. What did you see start to happen for you as you practiced exposing yourself to your fears and doing the five Fs? Like what kinds of shifts happened for you? Um, this is such a difficult part to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, you're, um, I mean, you're polishing the mirror. So, uh, so you become truer. Um, I would say the, if you think of the self or the personality as the space of meaning making and the, the, the process of relating to truth, then with every anxiety that you face and overcome, you have a greater capability to relate to the truth and you have a um, greater capacity for the truth. Um, and, and truth compels. When you know something is true, you don't have to work at it anymore. You don't have, there's nothing you have to do to convince yourself of it. It's like once, once an, a falsity has been exposed, it just, why would you persist in it? It's ridiculous. Um, and so sort of confronting truth uh, and confronting and building the capacity for truth uh, causes all kinds of transformations. Um, they're, they're really difficult to put into words because so many of them are experiential, uh, but, but, all, but really a lot of, um, you just start to change. You just start to, you just start to uh, look around and go, oh wow, like, wow, there was, there was like, I learned a proverb about that when I was four years old and that was true the entire time. And I just like somehow got away from that. And I, and, and there's all, and my life is actually filled with all of this simple bounty and joy and, and goodness. And it's, and I've, and I've been, I've been standing waist deep in water, dying of thirst 